After a 10 year absence, Hobbytown of Boston is back in business. And what I have here is one of their brand new universal four axle chassis kits for GP diesels and a few others. So in this video, I'll be building the chassis and giving a review of the product. I've got all the parts laid out that will be used to build the kit. And everything is generally the same as it's been for the past 50 years. There are a few minor changes though, so I'll go ahead and show those to you right now. One of the biggest changes, at least for the current production, is the helical gears. These are normally made of brass, but the source for the brass gears hasn't been providing them for a long time, so these Delrin gears are being used as a substitute. I believe they'll work perfectly fine and run perfectly smooth, so there should be no problems from there. It's just a little change from the old ones, and the owner of Hobbytown is actively looking for a new source for brass gears for those who want them. The next change is the standard motor provided with these kits. The motor that's now included is the same as what you'll find in a lot of high quality trains from Atlas and Proto and a few of the other big names. It's a very smooth running motor. It's got as much torque as the old open frames, and I believe it'll be a very good addition. The last change is in the axles provided. Now in previous productions, Hobbytown used these square bushings that fit directly into the square slots in the trucks, but those parts are no longer available, so they're now using these round bushings. They should also work perfectly fine. It's just a little change that I thought should be noted before I start. Only a few basic tools are needed to build a Hobbytown kit. These screwdrivers, razor, and file are about all that's needed to do most of the work on this thing. Now for oiling the bearings, I'm just using ATF because it's a light fluid that's plastic safe and used in car transmissions, so it has to be reliable. And then for the gears, I'll just be using Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. There are better options for gears, but this works well enough for me, so that's what I'll be using. And then, also, since this is a customizable frame, some cutting may be required to fit certain models, and a hobby saw like this one can really come in handy for that. Well, the first step for any metal kit is to inspect all the parts and clean off any molding flash that may be around there. It only takes a few minutes to get all this off, and it can all be removed with the file and some of it with the razor. Main castings are now filed and cleaned up. Look pretty good. And for the trucks, when filing those, you want to wait on filing out those axle slots until the directions tell you to. There are just some things about the assembly that, um, just for proper fitting, require that you wait. Now the first step in the instructions for the frame is after cleaning it up to cut it to the desired length. For now though, I'm just going to build it at the standard length shown here. Now the first thing to add on is the flywheel pillow block here. That fits in there and is screwed in from underneath. And that has to be added first because once the fuel tank here is put in place, you see those holes there are covered up. Once the fuel tank is assembled to the frame, these screws here in front have to be cut and filed down so that they don't interfere with the universal shaft slater. Next up is mounting the motor. As you can see here, I've already pressed the coupling onto the shaft and put this little plastic bracket in place. And to put the motor onto the frame, first you put this plastic spacer down on top and these screws go in just part of the way then the motor slides forward, then you screw that down and tighten it in place. The next step is assembling the trucks. The first thing to do is to put the gear shaft in there. Each end gets a washer and a bushing, and then slips into those slots right there. And the goal here is to have these things spinning as freely as possible with little to no slop because there's almost no 
clearance in there for the gear so you want to make sure that these will really stay in place. Once the shafts are turning satisfactorily they can be taken back out for testing the axles. So let's just slip into their slots there and you should be able to turn them freely while getting them fully seated may require just a little bit of filing in those slots to make them fit perfect. The key to getting these things to running smoothly is to make sure there are absolutely no binds in the truck. So that's just doing a little bit of filing here and there, maybe adding a washer or two. And eventually, you should be able to turn everything by hand and on track and feel absolutely no binds. And then once that's done, just oil all the bearings grease the axle gears and it is ready to go. A couple other quick little things about the trucks. Once they're assembled and tested, the um, one end of the shaft needs to be cut if needed for clearance of the coupler box and the insulated wheels should be on the same side to prevent short circuits. Now that I've got the trucks assembled and rolling freely, the next thing is to put on the gear tower. I found that it's easiest to do this with just the large gear in place on the tower and it also it's also best to keep the bearings dry until everything's adjusted because then if any metal filings were to get in there they're a lot easier to clean out. Now when adjusting the gear mesh if it's too loose you file a little bit off of the bottom of this tower here and if it's too tight then you put a thin spacer between the tower and the truck. It's a little hard to show on camera but if you look real closely between these teeth here you can see that the mesh is just a little bit too loose so they're not engaging smoothly. So to fix that I'll just have to file the bottom of that tower a little and test it again. After a little filing and putting a paper shim on this end everything is now turning very smoothly and since the gears are meshed properly they're also fairly quiet. So now I can oil that and move on with the assembly of this thing. Next up is to mount the trucks to the frame. Now before the trucks can be mounted, first this support for the front truck has to be attached and the other block for the flywheel also has to be put on and the motor actually has to be taken back off for the rear truck so it can technically be left off until after all the framework is done. So with this in place, the front truck gets a couple of these plastic bushings. There's one on top and one on the bottom. Those just slip into that big hole. And then you tighten it with the screw. All right, both trucks are now mounted. The front truck is insulated from the frame using these plastic bushings. And then the rear truck has a brass bushing, so it is grounded to the frame electrically. Next up is assembling the flywheels. Now while most HO scale diesels come with two flywheels, this one comes with three. So these bushings, they fit on each end, and then the large flywheel screws onto the shaft and that's held in place by a brass bushing and the plastic coupling on the end. And there's the assembled flywheel shaft. The flywheel and the coupling, they tighten against each other so they can be adjusted to just the perfect position. Now, I am going to have to shim the whole thing up just a little bit because the large flywheel, it's just slightly rubbing on the front truck. Just a thin shim should be enough to get that to where it needs to be. All right, I've got the flywheels shimmed and installed and spinning as freely as possible. A little piece of Katie Coupler box was just the right thickness to get that to where it needed to be. And then these two retainers just needed a little bit of filing so that they wouldn't cause the bearings to bind up. Next is putting together the universals. Now for the top one, I put the motor back in place and then I just compare the shafts to the couplings 
and I'll mark a cutting point and cut it there. After that, it can be mounted to the little ball joints here. There's one of the assembled couplings. On these, the square shaft presses into the red coupling and it's a slip fit in the white one. And that design makes it so that it works really well for the rotation of the trucks. Keeps a really good grip without it slipping out to where it shouldn't be. Okay, one thing I didn't realize before I started was since this kit is designed to be cut to the length of the body it's going into, when it's just at its standard uncut length, it's a little too long for the universal to fit underneath. But just for now, I've cut my own piece from some square tubing I had on hand. I've put the gear tower back in place, and one more little thing that I did not notice was that when mounting the truck to this position, the brass bushing between the coupling and flywheel has to be left out. And then the end of the shaft has to be cut off to make room for the gear there. So now that's all together, and all I have to do is wire it up and I can give it its first track test. The wiring is finished, and to make this one go forward I found that the negative terminal on the motor has to be wired to the right side rail and the positive terminal to the left side rail. So for the one wire going to this truck, I just have it screwed down to the frame since that truck is grounded to the frame. Then the other one I connected right there. Just one slight issue I found after the first track test. These little spots here are shorting against the frame so um, that just needs to be filed down to give it more clearance. Alright, now let's see this thing running. A bit noisy because of that upper universal, but the thing is running very, very smoothly. Just like I expect from Hobbytown. So there is still a slight short circuit around here. I've already filed down the tower, so next I think I'll file some little notches into the frame there where the gear tower is contacting. And that should prevent any further problems and have this thing running perfect. Alright, after a little more filing, that gear tower has now got full clearance on both sides. So there should be no more short circuits from that. Running perfectly smooth now with no more short circuits. So there you have it, about six hours to put together one of the smoothest and most reliable power chassis ever created in HO scale. Anyone with even a moderate level of skill putting kits together can build one of these properly, and it is completely worth the time to do it. I've since cut and fit the chassis to my Atherin GP40 body here. I've given it quite a few hours of runtime, so now I think I can do a little more of an appropriate review on it. Fitting the chassis and GP40 body together was more complicated than I expected, but still completely doable. I've gotten some good photos and sent them to Hobbytown, so maybe they can add that to the manual for anyone who's interested in using this chassis for Atherin bodies like this one. After giving the chassis a lot of runtime, all those new Delrin gears that are used on the axles are showing absolutely no signs of wearing whatsoever. So I would say they are easily as reliable as the old brass gears. Now the only slight issue I've found so far to the running quality is in the electrical pickup. Since it's only two wheels from each truck, dirt buildup can affect it a little more. There is some room in there to install some 
electrical wipers, so with a little creativity, it can be brought up to all-wheel electrical pickup and they'll help it to run more reliably over dirty track or switches. I have a standard KD coupler installed in the coupler box there and I'm happy to say that that is at exactly the correct height so absolutely no problems there. One of the advantages to these Hobbytown drives is their power. I've got 20 free rolling freight cars behind here And it just starts right up, no problem at all. It didn't even show any slippage in the wheels. New round bushings for the axles have also been working very well. No signs of wear on those. I'd also like to mention that the new CAN motor included with these kits makes it very power efficient. It doesn't use any more electrical current than any of the other top quality diesels on the market right now. So with all that I would say that this chassis is just as good if not better than the Hobbytown products of the past and I'm really glad to see that they haven't dropped the quality one bit on these things.